Welcome back to What Would It Cost? This week we're talking about scaling your real estate business with our expert, Tom Story. <laughs> what is it going to cost? How much? Hi, my name is Nicholas Regina. My name is Michael Sakuro. And you're listening to What, what Would, would it, it Cost? cost? <laughs> is that good? Thanks for coming out. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. I really look forward yeah. to having this conversation with you. We uh, checked you out at the Buzz Conference. Yeah. That was the first time we uh, heard you speak, and uh, yeah, we were blown away. True, truly Blown appreciate away. that thank yeah. you <laughs> you have the picture on your instagram i looked at it yesterday we were on the top balcony oh really yeah, the three of us <laughs> it was like the best kept secret right and so we had we had yeah uh, the good viewpoint a good angle yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and again we were thoroughly impressed with your job man that was awesome thank very you. very natural very very uh just kind of rolled off your tongue and and you felt like it, it, it looked like you were in a, in your comfort zone and just totally total natural habitat you know what's right? funny yeah. is is speaking or doing any type of public speaking yeah growing up like terrified me like i right. would shake before had like sweats the night before yeah and then when i started talking about something i actually cared about right. it was weirdly just like something came over me yeah. and Made a world wow. and it just totally changed and it started with like you know filming my little youtube videos and then doing the news and then doing public speaking yeah and now it just feels like weirdly natural so yeah yeah, yeah anyone yeah, yeah. that's like nice. terrified of it like i promise you if you're passionate about what you talk about right. like you'll very be very okay. cool very cool yeah i haven't heard that one before but that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So yes, tell us a bit about yourself, your background, where you come from. Sure. So uh, I was born in Toronto, uh, went to the University of Guelph. Uh, When I was 18, I actually, I was working with my uncle one summer and he was like hanging like TVs on people's walls. It was like when that, when the TV started becoming a thing you put on the wall. Yeah. (laughs) And I remember like going to a few houses with him and one of the houses was a real estate broker in the beaches of Toronto. Okay. And I remember just like he came home and I was talking Beautiful, to him. I'm like, yeah. I like this guy. Something yeah, about yeah. this guy. And I, and I really started digging in. So I remember thinking like, okay, when I'm 18, I'm going to get my license. I'm going to go sell real estate. My oh, parents wow. basically were like, no, probably not a good idea. Go to school, which I'm happy I didn't that young, not having right. family in the business. Right. Okay. So I went to the University of Guelph. Got my degree in sociology, which I have never put to use once in the last 10 years. Uh, And uh, came out in my fourth year, did my courses, started, mentored under somebody. Like really that first year survived. Like I was, none of my friends could afford to buy. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't even afford, I was 22 when I started. Right. Right. Couldn't afford to buy, couldn't afford to lease. Their parents yeah. didn't trust me yet. Like it was very, yeah, 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 yeah. very tough. Yeah, so tough I built my business up on leases in downtown Toronto, nice. built my database. And now, you know, this is year nine. Okay. So 30 now and uh, built out a team, um, a lot more structure in my life, just became a dad. So it's, cool. it's been it's a crazy, on, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a really cool, like last almost decade yeah. of um, just doing things in a way that you can wake up and feel excited about your business Yeah, and have it grow every year right without burning out awesome awesome very cool do you ever do you ever find out what that guy's name was and i do i actually know him he doesn't yeah he doesn't know that it's him but i had lunch with him three weeks ago actually so okay okay. yeah so it's all full circle yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. shout out buddy on the beach yeah (laughs) yeah he gave birth to a living legend over here (laughs) we're talking about earlier you know the tv appearance how that works so i'd love to Go yeah. Through more about that, like how you got started with that, and yeah. what that whole experience is like. Because we have never had anybody that we were able to have yeah, a discussion yeah. with, and we thought it was really cool. Totally. So yeah. it started, you know, very very small. So I remember actually at the end of 2015, I was sitting at the back row of a real estate conference, and the yeah. presenter at the time was like, "Just take one thing that we learned today and go actually do it, like execute on that idea." Yeah. And I remember thinking, like at the time, I couldn't get the seat at the kitchen table, and I did. I thought on a client experience level, market understanding level, I was there. Yeah. But wasn't seeing the results. Results. Okay. And it was frustrating and you, you got to have patience. But yeah. so I wrote down video and capital letters. So how this all started, I started making monthly market update videos that I okay. called the story report and I would just send to my database, which at the time was like 50 people. Right. 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 That kept going. And then after that, brokers would ask me to talk to their to their company. So real estate brokers would have me come in and talk to their agents on Very how cool. to do video. Okay. So it all like stems from one little thing. And then the YouTube channel started, you know, gaining some decent traction. 
And then my company yeah. saw me making videos, was like, hey, you can talk in front of a camera. Would you ever be interested in doing media if we have the opportunity? Oh, very cool. And so it started with a lot of print media. I would do like interviews over the phone for a few years. Okay. I actually remember the first time I did live TV was January 1st, 2018. It was the day the stress okay. test came yeah. in. Oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah. I'm happy I didn't go out hard the night before on New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember waking up and yeah, I got yeah. like an hour notice, like, do you want to go do CP24 live, like sit on the couch and have a conversation? No and I was way. like, yeah, okay. This this is my time. That's cool. Yeah. So, nice. so it all started very, very small. And and what I teach a lot of realtors and just I guess basically anybody in any industry is I think that visibility beats ability. Okay. Okay. So, doesn't mean ability is not important. Very cool. It's extremely important. Visibility beats ability. Right. Okay. So you need to have the ability, but it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do if nobody knows. Right. right. So my whole thing was like, I gotta show people I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because I can be the, the best mortgage broker, the best financial advisor, the best realtor in terms of like the fundamentals and the actual act of doing it doesn't necessarily do the most amount of business. Right, right. Why, why is that? Well, because people don't know they exist. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So for me, it was like, okay, well, how do I get exposure? How do I get people to know who I am? Right. And that I just started filming myself on video. Like my first videos weren't good. Like, yeah, yeah, no, like it, if you, you look at my old, you find them, they're still there. Like yeah. full, full suit and time. I'm, I'm gonna go deep on that. I'm gonna go deep Notes on that. Notes in front of me like, yeah. hey guys, welcome back to, <laughs> you know, like, and and, yeah. and it was like, even like I would get feedback and people were like, hey, like I watch your video, cool, but like your eyebrows didn't move once. <laughs> like, are you okay? So, but I'll tell you, like, and then it's like, okay, well, then how do you get on the news? Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was just because I was, I was visible. I put yeah. myself out there. Yeah. And if, and if anybody watching that really wants to get onto the news for any industry, go see who writes the articles. And, yeah. and you can email the producer, the reporter, and right. be like, I have an opinion on this. This is who I am. Right. And, right. But I will say, once you get on their Rolodex, they yeah. will continue to call you. But if you say no a few times in a row, you're, you're done. done. That's it. Yeah. Wow. They will move on. So, very yeah. quick notice. And yeah. you have to be ready and you have to move things in your day to make that happen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to tie it back to what I, what we were talking sure. about a little earlier, that April 14th report that I seen, right? And uh, don't worry, I'm not going to ask any mortgage <laughs> questions, but I was, I was thoroughly impressed because I said, wow, what a well-rounded realtor knowing, you know, um, a lot about the ecosystem in general, as you spoke three minutes about, you know, just mortgage knowledge, right? And and that yeah. was, it was crucial information because at that time, that's when the Bank of Canada bumped the BPS and, uh, and sorry, yeah, bumped yeah. the rate, yeah. right? The BPS and had it being that you were going to be the one to fill the public in on that information, right. being a realtor and not known as a mortgage expert, but you definitely, you know, knocked that one out of the park and I was really impressed. I said, Thank wow, you. that's very cool that well, he did that, right? And I, and I know too that yeah. when I go onto the news and talk to the public, we have conversations within our industry right. and we kind of talk quick on things and, and, and use a little, little verbiage and things like that. The yeah. average consumer yeah. doesn't understand like we do right. Right. for our specific niche that we do, right? right? So whenever I do that, I have to understand that I'm talking to someone that's sitting in their house that yeah. didn't really read all the forms when they signed their mortgage and they know they have a variable, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah, really yeah. know the back end of everything yeah. and I wanna be able to explain in a way that they can understand. Exactly. Right? And not overcomplicate everything. Because exactly. I think in most of our industries, yeah. uh, it is actually simple. We just find ways to overcomplicate it to make yeah. it seem Solid like we know acronyms. what we're talking about. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. acronyms are, yeah. The acronyms, the big yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and with the media stuff, the you know, I think my clients think it's cool. It, it definitely helps me in the industry uh, yeah. with reputation, but I think the actual benefit to our clientele is like I fundamentally have to understand what is happening. Right. Because if I don't, I look like a dodo yeah. on live TV. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. So I really yeah, look at the numbers. They need to be yeah. the experts. So and yeah. they, they want that confidence with you because it's the biggest transaction of their life. They're scared. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if they don't have that confidence, that you don't have that confidence. It's yeah. like, well, where are we going here? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that that's that's very cool that that big of a responsibility kind of can keeps that continued pressure to have you on your toes trying to yes. be the best that you got to be all the time like you got to be on all the time because that call could come in and then your your audience is is pretty wide it's pretty large right so it's it's cool that that in in an indirect way can keep a continued amount of pressure on you to be the best that you could be at all times 100 percent. like yeah, which is being comfortable is is not good for any business owner yeah and i will say that like 
speaking on stage and stuff, I feel pretty good about that now. Like no matter what, I, I know what I'm going to say. Yeah. But the news still gives me the little butterfly. Like yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. right before, because they, they call you 10 minutes before and they go, this is the test call. Can you say your name? Can you count to 10? All that kind of stuff. Okay. And then they bring you on and you're watching about five minutes of the news before you go on. Okay. And then you see the anchor and they're like, all right, 10, nine. And then as it happens, I'm like, all right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and cool. it, it yeah, really, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like doing it just because it gives me that jolt. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, That yeah. selling another house doesn't give me that anymore. But like right. doing that is very <laughs> yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool, eh? Heavy dopamine release. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you open it's Facebook chasing. and there's like the 10 notifications. It's like yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. That's awesome. And I know 10K following was uh, a joke that you were <laughs> making that yeah. you you finally surpassed it so thank you 10.1 yeah. you're at right? i'm in I the uh, last night there. the club now the i can't 10K. talk about it but there's the secret <laughs> things that happen okay no okay. no it really was at the at the time it was you got the swipe up but now that there's links on instagram i don't think anything changes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well congrats that, that's a pretty and that pretty good following and by the way man. that was all organic i didn't like follow a bunch of people yeah that yeah. took me uh, probably five years right. 1300 posts Wow. Wow. So, yeah, but yeah. but I also recognize on my Instagram, yeah, more than half the followers are other realtors. Right. Right. So okay. I understand that when I'm making content, I'm also speaking to them and the benefit yeah. that you think you're going to get it out of anything is always different than what you actually think it's going to be. So, right. when I started doing Instagram, I was like, "Well, I hope I can find new people that want to buy and sell homes because that's my that's my job, right?" Yeah. yeah. But then what started happening is a realtor from Calgary would be following me like, "Tom, I got clients going to Toronto." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the the B2B, inbound yeah, referrals yeah, B2B yeah. became massive and that's yeah. really what Instagram nice. is for me now. Right. Solid. Yeah. Awesome. Solid. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. And uh, we want to talk a bit about now your your real estate firm scaling that business. What's that look like? Sure. And tying it back to what would it cost? So yep. give us a bit about uh, information about your company. Yeah. And uh, yeah, how how that worked, how you were scaling it, and what the cost looked like. Sure. So I had no master plan here. Like yeah. it was, uh, I started on my own. Uh, real estate is a very very lonely business at the beginning, especially when you start as like basically a kid. Realistically, when I started, I was 20, I look 21. young now. You yeah, should yeah. see me then. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. and. Um, Ran around for the first two years, probably not doing things the right way, but learning a lot and yeah. building relationships and, and just, you know, learning what not to do maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then started off by bringing Cam. So Cam was one of my good friends from university. He worked okay. at CBRE on yeah. the commercial side. We would talk all the time and eventually I convinced him to come join me in Toronto. So that's when the story team was created, probably yeah. 2016. Yeah. Um, and then since then, what's kind of cool actually, so now the structure is there's myself, there's Karen who, who runs the team administrative side of things. Okay. There's Cam, there's Morgan, there's Heather, who's actually my mother. Oh, awesome. So man. she joined us uh, two years ago. Sweet. And then we have Wendy and Umrit who are our newer agents. And when you start, you have to start with leases because I want you to learn all the buildings and things right. like that. Absolutely. So we built out a, a bit of a structure now where my day to day now is I pretty much represent sellers. Yep. And I make content and do education calls. Okay. Nice. So okay. I'm not running around as much with the buyers anymore because I have five team members that are frankly better than me at it yeah. at this point. Right. Really right. good. And I can jump in when it's strategy and talking about offers. Um, so that's kind of the, the structure cool. yeah, yeah, I like that. of awesome. the team now. Yeah. For what it costs, because you know, we're in an industry yeah. that everyone wins an award. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. It's like you showed up for ten days straight. Here's a <laughs> Here's a trophy, right? <laughs> but you win the awards based on GCI, gross commission income. Okay. okay? Right. That's the amount of, that's not what you made. That's what came in and yeah. then you pay your splits and then you pay your taxes right. and then you have your expenses. Yeah. Right. But yeah. you win the awards based on the amount of money you made the company. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's kind of more of like an ego head game for people. Okay. So if I really break it down, like, hey, what's my big cost right now to run my team? Right. So administrative assistant, if you're going to have someone that's full time, yeah. someone good, it's going to be $60,000 plus right. a year. Right. So yeah. that that's no matter if you do any sales, it's going to cost you yeah. that. My biggest expense is actually probably staging. Okay. So we include staging in our selling packages because yeah. it property sell for more money. Yeah. If I look at just last year, what I spent on staging it was probably about $100,000. Okay. But the best ROI yeah. in my business. Right, exactly. right, yeah. Right, yeah. so staging's yeah. a big one. And then if you look at other fees associated, so like I pay a real estate coach to coach me and I'm part of an organization on that. Yeah. That's about 10 grand a year. Awesome. Again, 
Yeah. Happy to spend that based on what I get yep. back. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you just look, look at like photos and then if you go like high level, there's brokerage fees and things like that. But yep. like, you know, all in, we're spending a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to run the business. Right. And so even though the money coming in, the revenue is great, you have to look at the cost per sale. Right? Yeah. And I really think that's something that the real estate industry hasn't been taught well enough. Right. Where if you're in advertising, it's like, well, okay, how much money did I spend versus how much did I make? And right. for each person coming in, what did it cost? Right. And so if I really break down what does it cost, if I'm working with someone that is a repeat client or was referred to me by a past client, yep. it's about 15 cents on the dollar. For a okay. dollar earned, I spent 15 cents on that system. Right. If I look at uh, a referral from another real estate agent, it's a 25% on the dollar because you pay a 25% finder's fee to the right. person that sends you the opportunity. Okay. So that that's not an upfront cost, but it comes off the revenue, yep, right? Yeah, yeah. And then if I look at new business, uh, what I spend time put into making YouTube videos or, or mm. Instagram stuff or sending old school flyers, which by the way, still work, <laughs> still work. You just have to consistently do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the way, my flyer budget's probably 30 grand a year. Okay. But again, happily spend it based on the money it can bring in wow. opportunity nice. wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so if you really break it down, it's like if I was newer in any business, I would start with the people that I know. Okay. Because the cost to acquire that business is low. Yeah. Right. And it just takes time. Yeah. Right. Uh, once you've kind of gotten a decent return on that, then you would look at, okay, what alliances do I have? Uh, mortgage brokers, there's no true cost to that other than just relationship, financial yep. advice, all that kind of stuff. Yep. That's relationship based cost. Right. Yep. Um, and then if you look at, yeah, the realtor referrals is 25, and then brand new business, flyers probably cost me 35 cents on the dollar. Okay to get that $1 in actual income. Right, right. Um, but now that's taken into consideration the entire budget per year, what I spent to send them out. Once I got the opportunity, how much I have to spend to get the property to the market? Because if, if I had to average, okay, when I get a property on MLS, when the public actually sees it, I'm personally in it about four to $7,000, depending on the size of the property. Okay. Before I, Anything's guaranteed, right? Right, right, but right, right. I know following that system that the results are there, that I'm happy to put my money where my mouth is basically because yeah. um, my whole business is repeat and referral. Right. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool that you got it yeah, right. down you to have a T like right. that. Yeah. yeah, you really do. You really do. Because then you know how to allocate and where to focus your efforts and your capital and when you when you inject it back into the to the business. Totally. Right? So yeah, very yeah. cool. Very cool. I think that was the best uh, what would it cost <laughs> breakdown we, we've had. You're a bookkeeper and an accountant. <laughs> awesome, man. Very cool. Yes, you mentioned to us there's a lot of public speaking you do besides, you know, the uh, the Instagram, YouTube sure. on the news. So what's the ROI look like that as well when you're going to these conferences like the Buzz Conference or any other ones you've gone to? Yeah. What yeah. I was lucky to realize early is that like if you put your money into the real estate market or the stock market, the markets kind of go like this. But if right. you invest yeah. heavily in yourself, there's no, like yeah. you can keep yeah. moving upwards, right? Good so the, the initial ROI was relationships. Right. I want to put myself in rooms with people that I can, even meeting you guys today, like I didn't, we didn't know each other previously. Yeah, right. Now we know each other and, and that's cool. And you never know where that can go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So with the public speaking, when I first got, got started, I would do it for free. I would do it because I wanted to get in the room. I want for people to know who I was. Yeah. And typically I was speaking to mortgage brokers or real estate agents, okay. which if they were not in my market, they would sometimes just send me their clients if they were moving to Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that alone Beautiful. Was, yeah. was worth way more than a speaking fee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? absolutely. Um, if I'm looking at it now in terms of, of doing speaking fees, you know, usually for virtual stuff, I'm about 1500 bucks for the hour. And again, okay. that's just to make sure that the people that show up take it seriously. Yeah. Right. I would actually do it for free. Probably shouldn't say that, but yeah. <laughs> I would. But for them to take something seriously, they yeah. have to have paid for it. Yeah. For, for in-person and bigger conferences, I'm anywhere from 2500 to $5,000 to come speak. Awesome. But again, yeah. that's not how I make my living. Right. right. I know where I make my living. This is kind of the passion side thing that contributes to the actual real estate right. sales business. Right. But more right. than anything, it's it helps reputation in the industry and even even small things like if we have a client that's offering on a property and it's represented by another agent who knows who we are, yeah. we have the upper hand right. because they trust us. Yeah. There, if there's yeah. two offers that are identical, yeah. but there's like this agent yeah, you're getting yeah, a yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. a great feeling about, you're gonna go with the agent you know takes their business very seriously, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of how it all started. It's it's relationships. Cool. The actual like income earned on the speaking stuff, 
I, that's not where I make my living. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a nice bonus. Right. But it's right. it's relationships and making sure that I get exposure in front of crowds that might not have known who I was previously. Right. Fantastic. And to go to your point, at the end of the day, sometimes it's it's like we talk about the mortgage side. The rate's the rate's the rate. Any broker, we, right. we might all have the same rate. You might have all the same offers. It's just really how you treat that client and your relationship with those people. So I love that point that you made on that. And yeah. even I, what I struggled with at the beginning, especially with like the Instagram stuff, was like, when I'm putting out content, am I showing that I'm speaking to other realtors? Do my clients care about that? Should I just be talking about the market? And I, right. I like struggled with that. And now I'm just putting out everything. And yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the clientele also thinks it's cool that I do the other things. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, maybe yeah, that yeah. even helps the, um, you know, how they feel about me when I come in. Right? Absolutely, right. yeah, that confidence that, that when you're going B2C at, at that point, it's like the, the things that they would question, yeah. you know, a, a realtor about, uh, because they're feeling a type of way or you know they're they're nervous given the size of the transaction and those aren't even questions that they they're thinking in their heads when you walk in a room because it's like this guy knows what he's right. talking about he yeah. knows what he's doing whatever he says go to the beat of his drum so what does that look like on an efficiency sure. standpoint when you're not having to have nine out of the ten conversations yeah. that other realtors are having to have even though they very white uh very well might have the ability yep. like you said yep. but they don't got the visibility they almost have to do more explaining of themselves or answering the questions than you do because of the visibility aspect right 100 percent. like yeah. it's so funny when i look at now like online leads yeah in any business we think they're all crap the conversion rate's very low even if you're a killer at it yeah Online leads have completely changed for me because so the way that I look at it is there's two types of leads for real estate agents or really anybody. Leads that reach out to you because they want you and then the house or the mortgage or the financial plan is secondary right. or leads that reach out to you for a product. Right. Yeah. I want this product and you're the one that's going to get me this product, but the product is what they want. Right. And for us, it's a house. Maybe for you guys, it's, it's different things for everybody, yeah. right? I want people to reach out because they want me first and then the product is secondary of course yeah right. okay so now when i'm getting people book calls with me and a lot of it's coming from youtube because that's where i'm talking to new consumers mm. um when i'm answering the phone they're like tom i'm like yeah they're like oh my god all right i watch you i'm like yeah, yeah. cool you know like they're putting you on this mini pedestal yeah which yeah. is so crazy yeah because yeah. i'm just i sit in my basement and make youtube videos <laughs> yeah yeah but they're like yeah listen and they, they'll reference things i've said in the video oh, yeah. like we want to build a relationship with you and your team it's oh, not yeah. Why yeah. should we work with you? It's like, we're yeah. gonna work with you. Yeah. yeah. Let, yeah. How do we get I'm started? Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. It's a totally awesome. different yeah. Yeah. mindset from what we've been taught, at least, that we think online leads are all just crap. They're not. They're human right. beings with a heartbeat. They right. just don't trust you yet. Yeah, right. yeah, love it. And, and, and so it is the difference yeah. between the sales pitch rather than actually educating them. And that was the one thing like we made yeah. sure when looking right down to our site or the videos we put out is like, we want to make it feel that you're comfortable coming to us, not that you're scared to come to us. We're going to educate you, not yeah. talk about the, again, these acronyms and big words around you where it's like, you need us. This is what we got to do. It's no, like, come here, let me educate you. And that, yeah. that, that's what gets them comfortable. And I think that's what's worked you great can for almost, you educating them. Yeah, the education. You aspect. could almost see yeah. like the client's shoulders go from this to, to drop in. And, and when I start every in-person meeting with a new client, whether it's a buyer or seller, I'll tell them like, okay, I didn't bring paperwork for you to sign today. I literally don't. Yeah. I want this to be an education session. And my entire business, about 90% of the sales we do every year are repeat and referral. Right. So my goal wow. with you is to knock this out of the park that at the end of this, you want to tell your friends and family about us. Yeah. And when I start it like that, that they're yeah, like, yeah. okay. Absolutely. All right, what are we gonna talk about yeah. today? It's yeah, not yeah. like, hey, I brought this paperwork, sign here, sign here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could care less about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, no, it's totally cool. just flipped it to like an education yeah. model. We're there when you need us. Yeah. It's okay if you're not ready now, that's yeah. all right. Yeah. But when you are ready, we'll be available. And you're letting them know, hey, I need referrals yeah. over here. And, and, yeah, no, honestly yeah. though, but you, you're you make it clear from the enough. beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This that, is how I run my business. Yeah, exactly. If I yeah. if I do a great job for you, will yeah. you talk to Absolutely. talk about your friends to me? You let right? them know that that's something you're looking for, yep. right? Because they may think that you know what Tom's crazy busy and uh, we right. might be. It's like no, I'm welcoming new business, and I'd like for you to be an active lead generator for me if you think I'm I'm kick ass at what I do. So it, that that's smart because you're you're turning their switch on in regards yeah. to thinking, oh, I could do that for him i could bring right. business to him it's like the, yeah yeah the, 
the problem with a lot of real estate agents and when people ask them how they're doing, they always go, I'm so busy. Yeah. yeah you're yeah, literally yeah. telling your clients you don't have time for their referrals <laughs> because you want to make it seem like yeah, you're yeah. you're doing stuff yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah, where if yeah, you yeah. just flip in i've even seen like for cl the client events yeah the smaller events are good if you haven't gotten started yet because it's only supposed to be 10 people it's a micro event who cares if six people show up that's a win right yeah. but the bigger events that we do in the summer we have 150 people in a room the clients walk in they're like are these all your clients i'm like yeah but when they're working with you they feel like it's just it's just them. You and yeah, them. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. see yeah, well, they don't yeah. know I'm working with nine other sellers at that moment. And yeah. act, frankly, they shouldn't. They should feel like, yeah. but but then they recognize like, that's oh. That's really cool. So that's why I love the event side yeah. of things as well because they walk in and see each other and you are always their point of reference. Yeah. If they are sitting at the bar with someone they don't know, they're like, how did you meet Tom? Yeah. Like yeah. you're the talking point yeah. Yeah. of the conversation. That's really cool. Love that. Yeah. I love the point in regards to that I've never heard before and you even got me thinking now too with just watch with the whole I'm busy thing. Watch with the whole even looking that way. Don't yep. give off that kind of energy like chill. It's I got mission, you. Yeah. We're, we're all about your fun. Yeah. We're all about your transaction. That's when they reach cool. out and they're like, hey, we know you're super busy, but I'm like, no, no, no. I have. Yeah. I, let's go. Let's talk. Let's like, talk. I got time yeah, for you yeah, always. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. All right, Tommy. So there's three things that make the difference from being at the top or being at the bottom. Let us in on them. Yeah. So I have talked to a lot of successful people, especially earlier on in my career, where the, the, the highly successful people would meet with me and tell me exactly what they were doing and put it on a platter. Okay. And the people that were kind of fake successful would try to hide things, right? Okay. And what I realized from these conversations is there's three things that separates the top from the people just getting by. And it's not intelligence. It's not. Okay. And I'm not even trying to be funny saying that. Like yeah, it's yeah. not intelligence. <laughs> The first one is is patience. Okay. People don't have patience in business. Okay. The real doesn't the wheel doesn't need to be reinvented, right? So right. like we know fundamentally what works, but people give up after three months. Right. Like when I send uh, flyers, it took yeah. me eight months to get any return, and now we'll do 15, 20 listings a year from it. Right. Wow. right? Nice. So patience is the first one. Yeah. The second one is the consistency. Yeah. So small, boring tasks add up to big results. It just is what it is. I think yep. a lot of successful people have routines. So that consistency of whatever it is. And, and the joke's always like, if you wake up on January 1st and work out for six hours, or if you wake up on January 1st <laughs> and then do 30 hours a day for that month, which is going to give you a better yeah, result, yeah, right, right? Where right, most people right. get so into it. So yeah. um, there's the patience, there's the consistency. And then the third one is the execution. Okay. Everybody I know that's highly successful is not a planner. They okay. get an idea yeah. next week. Just barrel roll it's into in, it. It's in yeah, motion. Yeah, yeah, they don't wait. Yeah, yeah. A lot of yeah, people yeah. plan, 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 educate, educate. Yeah. And it's all good, but they're not utilizing it. Yeah. So right. I really think those are the three things in awesome. any industry It's that makes the top from the bottom. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. It's been an absolute all right. pleasure Sounds hosting good. you. Yeah. yeah we're, we're really, really pumped up that... Uh, you know, we got this episode and that we're going to be able to feature you. You're a legend in the business <laughs> and uh, you got a real cool, calm demeanor about you and, and super modest and humble for how well it is you're doing. And uh, it's respectable, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah. for having me. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Tom Story. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, let everybody know where they could uh, check you out. You yeah, know, sure. So for uh, kind of YouTube, just type in Tom Story. Uh, I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers, so maybe you can be number 5,000. <laughs> give them the push. And on uh, Instagram, it's just at the story team. We're, we're very active on both of those platforms. Awesome. Awesome. Man. All right. Thank All right, you. Thanks, cool. guys. Yeah. Thanks again for tuning into this week's episode of What Would It Cost? Be sure to like, follow, share, and we'll see you next week. Next on What Would It Cost? I've got a very compounded day to mm -hmm. also leverage out my my time. You know, yeah, like right. I, I don't, and then it's a, a lot of um, balancing and prioritizing your time while you have that time. You know, like I don't, yeah. I, if it's getting my groceries delivered to me, Amazon Prime, Costco, just subscription, just, you know, keep bringing the, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. you know, it's those time management things yeah. that really play a big role mm -hmm. in being able to be there better for your kids and service your clients and work. My family, had restaurants growing up having that hospitality in the in the back end yeah. in any industry yeah. sets you up for success sure. because you learn yeah. Yeah. how to work with all different kinds of people yeah. right and so Absolutely. i give shout outs to so many people who work in service-based businesses whether it's mm -hmm. hospitality restaurant business like you're saying clubs all that because uh, it truly sets you up yeah. for the success. work ethic that you need yeah. to push yeah.